The hostage situation in the Ukraine ends after the president endorses a Joaquin Phoenix film. Venice gondola tours reduce capacity due to overweight tourists. And an 82-year-old Japanese woman fends off a bear attack by kicking it and knocking it down. These are the weird stories for Wednesday. This is Weird AF News, and I'm your host, Jonesy, a Los Angeles comedian recording at home. I'm so glad that you're here. We have three weird stories from around the world, as we typically do. And uh, is it Wednesday? Yes, it is. I got the day right, at least. It's Florida Friday, only on Weird AF News. A hostage situation ended after the Ukrainian president agreed to endorse a Joaquin Phoenix film. A gunman in the Ukraine, armed with an automatic rifle and grenades, finally surrendered to the police and released a total of 13 hostages after the country's president consented to his demand to recommend the 2005 film Earthlings starring Joaquin Phoenix. This is one of the strangest gunman demands I've ever seen in a hostage situation. I recall one story I covered where the guy uh, demanded pizza, wasn't it? Yeah. This is wild. I've never seen the film Earthlings. I have no idea what it's about. 2005, anybody? The niche film recommendation delivered by President Volodymyr Zelensky over over Facebook helped end an hours-long standoff in the city of Lutsk, where 44-year-old gunman Maxim Krivosh seized a bus and demanded that dozens of government officials admit to being terrorists. During the hostage crisis, which began on Tuesday morning, Krivosh opened fire, threw a grenade at a police drone. The reports of automatic gunfire sent some journalists at the scene diving for cover. No one was seriously injured, thankfully, during the standoff, although a bullet was reported to have nearly missed the national chief of police. Oh, goodness. During the siege, one of the hostages spoke with a journalist by telephone and begged them to put the gunman in touch with the president's office. President President Zelensky spoke directly with Krivosh at that point, after which three of the hostages were released from the bus. The rest were released shortly after the president posted a short video online about a Joaquin Phoenix film critical of the poor treatment of animals. Yes, the film Earthlings from 2005. Uh, I guess it shows the the poor treatment of animals. I've never seen this film. Anybody? <laughs> The president posted the video and wrote, everyone should watch this. <laughs> Unbelievable. On Facebook, of course, it was deleted after Krivosh surrendered and let all the hostages go. And it was rep- replaced with a note thanking the police and others who helped end the hostage crisis. Apparently, this Krivosh character is an animal rights activist, the media reported. He had also spent nearly a decade in prison on fraud and weapons charges and was described by police as unstable after the incident. Oh, really? We, how would you describe this man? Well, after the incident, unstable for sure. I mean, he held 13 people hostage on a bus so that the president would post a trailer on Facebook from some very obscure Joaquin Phoenix movie from 2005 that no one's ever seen that I know. Yeah, yeah, I would say he's unstable. After all of this was squashed, the Ukrainian interior minister, Arsen Avakov, said, The film is actually a good one, and you don't have to be so screwed up and cause such a horror for the whole country. You can, you can watch it without all that. <laughs> that, was a very, that was an understatement for sure. Turns out this Krivosh also wrote a 500-page manifesto and delivered an anti-government Speech shortly before he boarded the bus. (laughs) To who? (laughs) The people at the bus stop? (laughs) 500-page manifesto on what? Poor treatment of animals? How how do you get 500 pages out of that? Man, these animal rights activists are just out of their minds. Really? I mean, I could see 500 pages of uh, a manifesto on how the government, you know, is uh, suppressing human rights. I mean, that's pretty clear all over the world, right? I mean, but animals? Really? That could be five pages, in my opinion. Five pages of that, surely. And these animal rights activists, they're, they're more militant than the human rights activists, it seems like to me. These people are out of their minds. Really, really. I mean, PETA, the, that whole organization. Crazy, crazy people over there. How do you get involved in this, in this government, in this government, in this organization? You know, prove to them that you're on mood stabilizers and own several guns? I mean, <laughs> these people are out of their minds, man. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of them. 
Venice, Italy gondola tours reduce capacity due to overweight tourists. Venice gondoliers have reduced the capacity on their boats, blaming the increased burden of overweight tourists. Oh, must be Americans. Uh, the limit on a gondola, which offers the classic tour of Venice's canals, has been reduced from six to five people while on a gondola. Boats mainly used to cross the Grand Canal, the number has decreased from 14 to 12. Now, you would think that they would reduce this to uh, make room for social distancing, but no, they're like, no, it's not social distancing. It's, it's fat tourists is what's going on. Andrea Balbi, president of Venice's Gondoliers Association, <laughs> told the media, <laughs> this is a position. I am president, I'm president of the Venice Gondoliers Association. That was, what was that accent? I have no idea. I take that back. I'm going to do an impression of Andrea. <laughs> it's true that compared to 10 or 15 years ago, tourists, they weigh a bit more, you know? Unlike in a lift where there's a message that says only six people or a, a maximum weight. We, we don't have scales to weigh people on the gondolas. And so we reduce the number of passengers to help. Did you, did you understand what I said there? <laughs> what accent is that? I'm just trying shit, guys, okay? Uh, heavy loads cause water to enter the vessel, in case you didn't know about a gondola. Uh, by the way, those things look super unstable. I've never been on one, but they look like they could tip over so easily. They look like worse than a kayak. Anyone ever ridden one of these gondolas? I'd love the lowdown if you could. Uh, another reason for the move is because a gondola, for example, the Nolo kind, is built to carry only five people. So the sixth person ends up sitting in a place without a cushion as the boat was only made for five people. Well, why did you put six people on there in the first place, Venice President Society of Gondola? Speaking to La Repubblica on the topic, Raul Ravarotto, the president of the Association of Substitute Gondoliers. That's a place. I mean, that's an organization. Association of Substitute Gondoliers? <laughs> oh, well, this person said, tourists are now overweight. Uh... From some countries, bombs load onto the boats. And when the boat is fully loaded, the hull sinks and the water enters. Advancing with over half a ton of meat on board is quite dangerous. We know this. <laughs> meat? Is that what you call your, your tourists? A ton of meat? That's not very nice. After all, they're, they're paying for your livelihood. You should treat them with more respect than that, uh, president of the Substitute Gondoliers Society. Uh, this measure was introduced alongside another measure allowing the offspring of gondoliers to take over their father's coveted license without needing to take the theory exam that follows a lengthy study of history and foreign languages. Their main requirement will be to demonstrate that they can row the gondola and have had four years experience of operating their family's vessel. Oh, but come on, we want them to, to tell us about the history of gondolas. You know, I want to know all about the gondola, gondoliering. <laughs> You better you better test them on the history of Venice. I at least want to know that. I want to know about the canals. I want to know where I can buy the good drugs. Even though anyone can apply to become a gondolier in Venice, the idea is to further protect a trade that was already impenetrable to those outside gondolier families. Ooh, it's tough to get into the gondolier business. The profession, which has been a pillar of the ancient city of Venice since 1084, today comprises... 433 gondoliers and 180 substitute gondoliers. It is about continuing a tradition, says Balbi. Uh, I should do like a godfather impression. Who better than a gondolier can know the trade of a gondolier? The canals, you know, the buildings, the city's history. The gondolier world is unique. There are only 400 of us. And finding someone from Paris, New York, or any other city would not be a continuation of this rich gondolier tradition. It would be like a pizza maker who isn't from Naples. Capiche? <laughs> I threw in the capiche for effect. Hope you enjoyed that. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. 
Too difficult? No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. An 82-year-old Japanese woman beat the crap out of a bear by punching it and knocking it down. Not to be outdone by a 63-year-old fisherman who beat the shit out of a bear with some karate. An 82-year-old woman in Hiroshima Prefecture recently shooed away an attacking bear by striking it and knocking it down, the media reports. Who is this 82-year-old badass? Rumiko Sazaki had been treating her weeds in her backyard along with her husband in the backyard of her Kita Hiroshima residence when she found herself being attacked by a black bear on July 16th. Oh, my goodness. In a video with Hiroshima Television, Sasaki says that when she stood up from her work in the weeds, she noticed the bear right in front of her, and it then attacked her. This is a quote from Sasaki. It took aim at my face. And it came at me very suddenly. But it feels like I hit it and I sent it flying back. Yes, she suffered scratches on her face, but that didn't stop her. She kicked the crap out of that bear, which fled the scene. I want to know why her husband didn't step up his game and beat the crap out of that bear. What are you doing, sir? What are you doing? I need more information about the husband's situation, man. According to the local hunting association, there have been 252 bear sightings in this area this year. But this is the first attack on a person. They recommend equipping a radio, cell phone, or even a bell when heading into the area's mountains. A radio? For what? Are you going to play Def Leppard really loud and scare the bear away? Pour some sugar on me. Get the hell out of here, you bear. The population of the Asiatic black bear in Japan has dwindled due to poaching and clashes with farmers as they have a habit of destroying crops and property. Oh, my goodness. And they always blame the bear. Uh, Well, you are probably a mountain region, I'd imagine. So you're going to get bears. Uh, Despite ongoing culling of the bears, some areas of Japan are proposing new and stringent protection policies for this animal. Well, why don't you just have this Sasaki lady go around and beat the crap out of the bears? She seems like she's got it down to a science. She kicks them and punches them. To the tune of ho 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 ho, everybody was kicking black bears. Sasaki's husband don't care. He watched his wife beat down the bear. He just sat right there in a chair. <laughs> that was a song about how terrible her husband is and didn't do anything about the bear. I had no idea it was going there, but it did. It did. It went there. And, you know, this story reminds me of how healthy elderly people in Japan seem to be. I mean, they got a lockdown on, first of all, more people live to be 100 per capita in Japan than any other country in the world. So they got that going for them. They're the healthiest people uh, in, in that, at that age. And it's just, it just blows me away. Whatever secret they have, it seems to be working. It's not really a secret, but... I mean, I'm sure we could find out what's going on there. I think they eat a lot of greens and they do uh, they, they exercise a lot. I, I, I really don't know. But clearly, if an 82-year-old woman can beat the crap out of a bear, I mean, something's going right over there. Seems like a good place to grow old. Like, I'd imagine in, in Japan, if you tried to, like, break into an old folks' home, they would just kick the shit out of you. You know, you'd, you'd get nowhere. You'd get nowhere. Be like a 100-year-old lady just kick you in the crotch and bye-bye. You know, something like that. I don't know. All right, I'm getting stupid right now. Please forgive me. This is what, this was a crazy story. If you like podcasts, check out Spotify. You can listen to all your favorite artists and podcasts in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge selection of podcasts on every topic, including this one that you're listening to right now. And you can easily share what you're listening to with friends on Instagram as well. So download the Spotify app, search for your favorite podcast, and also make sure to follow Weird AF News and never miss an episode. Yes, download Spotify and make your life easier. 
They were chopping them up. They were chopping them down. It was an ancient Chinese art, and everybody knew their part. That's just a fun song to sing with a Boston accent. Everybody was friggin' kung fu fighting. Uh, I got a review from Grace in Scotland, and I want to give her some love. I don't have any fans in Scotland, really. So Grace is like probably one of two. Uh, Grace in Milngavi, Scotland, wrote uh, five stars. I listen to the podcast every day. I think it's great. I love hearing about how weird the world is, especially Florida. I love your accents, especially your Dracula one. But please, please don't do British accents. Also, Nessie is in Loch Ness, not the sea. (laughs) She's just correcting me on all fronts here. Thank you, Grace. Uh, And since it's funny hearing you struggle to pronounce things, here's a little challenge. Pronounce these Scottish places. Milngavi, Colzean, Eklifekin, Oktamukti. Oh, my goodness. I just butchered all of those. Grace, you really put me on the spot there. I mean, I appreciate that you did that. (laughs) I can't say these words. I'm sure they sound hilarious if uh, someone who knew how to pronounce them said them. This is lovely, by the way. Uh, You know what I'm doing here? I just realized I'm introducing Florida to the rest of the world. (laughs) I I mean, I don't think people realize how messed up it is. Thank you, Grace, for uh, this Amazon review. I so appreciate you for doing that. Um, I got a lot of shout outs to get to today. All these people are on Instagram. By the way, Rebecca and Peter Honitschlager from Hartford, South Dakota, says, we don't go a day without listening to you, Jonesy. Yay, thank you. Um, Then we have Voms, V-O-M-S, a musician from London, says, been listening to you for two years, Jonesy. 100% best podcast slash skill on Alexa. That reminds me, you can listen to me on your Alexa if you tell Alexa to play the Weird AF News podcast. Pretty easy. Kathleen in Alabama is a shout out to her. She's a teacher working from home. Uh, She claims she turned all of her retired aunts or aunts onto Weird AF News and they all live in Florida. (laughs) It's amazing. It's perfect. Uh, Mario Jr. from the San Diego area. Shout out to Mario. Also, also Laura Irvine from the UK. Big shout outs to them. They said what's up on Instagram as well. David Balmak... I can't even say it. Balmakeda. Uh, from Kansas City, uh, says, a fan of Weird AF News. Uh, Jonesy, I asked one day Google Assistant to tell me some good news, and your recent Florida Friday episode played for me, and now I'm a fan. Thank you. Um, Thank you, David. And by the way, I'm learning how uh, people find my podcast. Sometimes it's very strange like that. Someone was like, I told Google to, to tell me something funny, and your podcast played. I was like, really? Google thinks I'm funny? Unbelievable. Um, I have... You know, I mean, my mother doesn't even think I'm funny, so <laughs> I'm glad that Google does. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, you can tell Google Assistant to play me. I'm on all the smart speakers, apparently. Just tell your device to play me and see what happens. And uh, I love feedback. There, I don't know. Are there any other devices but the Google one, the Alexa one? And I know, I know Apple makes one, but I can't remember the name of it. I assume they all play my podcast. I'm, I'm really only sure of the Alexa and the Google Home or a.k.a. Google Assistant. But I would love to hear if more of them do so. Um, I'm not familiar with these with this tech. You crazy kids and your technology! <laughs> wow. Uh, hey, check out the Patreon by the way. While I, before I let you go, Patreon.com/slash/WeirdAFNews. Join the Patreon. It's like joining a club. Uh, and I've been posting a lot of things in the Patreon. Uh, stuff stuff to keep you entertained during the uh, pandemic lockdown. I don't know where you are, but uh, where I am, uh, you know, we're locking down the restaurants and bars again because we can't behave ourselves in Los Angeles County. We just can't seem to. So um, hopefully you have a little bit more freedom than I have these days. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one losing my mind right here on this recording. Uh, also, call the show 646-450-2012. Let me, uh, let me know what's up with you. And uh, email me, funnyjones at gmail.com. Or you can also send me a PayPal donation at funnyjones at gmail.com if you'd like. Uh, I received a pound of coffee today, and I can't remember who sent it to me. I'm going to find who that is and give them a big shout-out tomorrow, so look for that. What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, follow me on Instagram, at funnyjones. How about that? I've been uh, I've been very busy on there. And i uh, been inter- interacting with a lot of my fans on there, as you heard the shout-outs today. Those were all from Instagram which is where I seem to get most of my uh, interaction. So, yeah, check me out on Instagram, at Funny Jones. That's where I'm at mostly. And uh, I hope you have a great week. We'll see you tomorrow, my friends. Hey, Joe. 
and the uh, boom boom sauce sounds like the kind of sauce you make in the bedroom. Boom boom sauce in your eyes. You remember that old Pat Travers song? Hello, Jonesy, my little Boston baked bean. It's me, the state of Florida, calling. How are you, honey? Well, I heard you put out a call, and I'm here to answer. Just so you know, the official state tree of Florida is the sable palm. The official bird is the northern mockingbird. Weird, yeah, news, yeah. <laughs> and the official state song of Florida, named in 1913, was Florida, my Florida. But the legislature changed it in 1935. And, drum roll please, the official state song of Florida is Swanee River, written by Stephen Foster. Way down upon the Swanee River. There you go, Jonesy. It's Swanee River. Not that crazy song you played on the radio. Oh, anyhow, there you go, honey. Talk to you later. Mwah! Stay safe and wear a mask.